Hello my fellow creative spirits. So today I wanted to do something a little bit different from usual. Um, I just kind of appeared out of the blue and a lot of people were like, who are you? So I decided to kind of give you guys a little bit of a background story about how I became an artist and why I became an artist. So um, in order to do that, I have to back up to when I was a kid. Something that I loved to do was to grab a big stack of computer paper and then just go all out on it with crayon all day, every single day. And then I got into elementary school and that kind of, I wasn't creating art as much because you know then you have to learn all of the fun school stuff. So uh, what I ended up doing a lot of the time in school, I was looked forward to art class. So I remember, um, you know, I was no prodigy by any means, but I did really enjoy creating art and um, I did get recognized in classes a lot for my art skills. I was like always getting uh, like little trophies for like the best drawn watermelon. I actually have a trophy that has that. And then I also had one of my drawings and I think second or third grade got sent to Japan. Um, one of my art teachers sent it to Japan for some gallery show of elementary kids over there so that was really cool. So that always kind of helped me, encouraged me to keep creating art. So as I grew up and I was growing up, I was still very creative even if I wasn't directly creating art. I was creating scary movies with the neighborhood kids. I was doing a lot of all of this fun stuff like creating cooking shows, making my own band of <laughs> pots and pans and then having our friend dance to it. Um, and doing all of that. So I was always very imaginative even as I was getting older. I was still making things up and making videos and just creating things. So uh, when I got into high school um, I was in a lot of AP courses and it got really hard to do art. And I remember in the school, the high school that I went to is not very supportive of the art so as much as I tried getting into um, the art classes there were some semesters or some um, some school periods that I didn't have art so what I ended up doing was getting a sketchbook and just creating even at any time that I could have time I would be in lunch and I would just start drawing into my sketchbook and just doing as much art that I could when I wasn't doing schoolwork and in high school I did end up going through a bit of a hard time I had these toxic relationships I had stress from the AP classes um, too much schoolwork the perfectionism was driving me crazy I kind of developed a little bit of an eating disorder as well and during this time it became really hard for me my sketchbook and drawing was a way that I could release all of these emotions in a healthy way and eventually I did get over that you know I graduated high school things got better um, I didn't want to go to college I remember telling everyone like I don't want to see college I don't want anything to do with college so what I ended up doing instead of going to college was I got a really bad retail job where um, it was a health and nutrition store it was absolutely terrible there was no integrity in that job whatsoever and I ended up leaving that leaving that job and then I saw that my boyfriend he had gone to college and he was going to college and I always thought college was something for the rich kids and I definitely did not have money for college so um, and my family didn't either we didn't really plan for college or anything like that so my boyfriend um, he was going to college and he told me you know like financial aid covers everything especially for the first two years get a basic degree and find a job with that so I found um, that I enjoyed psychology so I decided to go into psychology that was my original plan and I love psychology the only problem was you have to get a master's degree to get a job that I would have wanted in psychology so about one year in I had decided instead of on psychology I'm going to do um, teaching so I found um, teaching interesting and specifically elementary education because uh, I have the elementary personality or the elementary teacher personality. I wanted to do something like that and I wanted to make a difference in children's lives. I wanted to be inspire creativity in children. And then I started doing observations with amazing teachers that um, I formed great relationships with these teachers. But um, just I found that the job itself was not something that I was interested in. There was no creativity. It was kind of regurgitating information that textbook companies would give teachers to regurgitate into the children. And it was all very by the book. And I did not want to have to do that. I knew that I was going to be unhappy if I did not have freedom to teach how I wanted to. Um, so 
that and I would see that they were testing kindergartners and putting them into like you know groups and I was just I was not for that at all um, so I went into art teaching thought maybe that would be different art teaching was pretty much the same you know you have to test the children art and I didn't I still didn't like that either so then at this time I had taken some of my financial aid money and at this time I was also watching some other art youtubers that I really admire and also I began my Instagram and I started posting um, some of the art pictures that I was doing and I started I got commissioned from my aunt and that was a big challenge I created a my first oil painting from that I was kind of scared to I didn't want to do anything painting because I didn't know anything about oil painting and I got some tips from a few of my art friends and they told me um, how to create an oil painting and all of that. So that was my first oil painting and it was the biggest satisfaction I ever got. So after creating that, I wanted to keep creating and keep making oil paintings, keep making drawings. So I was growing disheartened with school. I was rushing to do schoolwork just so that I can do paintings and drawings. and. At this time, it was like nearing the semester ending, I got an invite to do a gallery show from my brother-in-law sent me like the event invite through Facebook and I saw it and it was kind of like a young artist group free for all. So like any subject matter would work. And at that time, I only had about three or four good finished drawings that I could frame up and, and take to a gallery. And I was so nervous, but I just decided to do it. So I took my art pieces to a gallery. This was about a year and a half ago. And I was just overwhelmed with the support and the encouragement from the people there. Uh, I was, I didn't know anybody at all, so I was kind of in the corner trying to, you know, meet a couple of people, but it was very uh, nerve-wracking to me. And just showing my art too, because I've never shown it to the public. I was a closet artist. I didn't really share any of my work. It was in my sketchbook, tucked away, and that's it. And um, so then, that night, I ended up selling a piece, actually. It was a Charles Darwin piece with finches in his beard. And it was the most amazing feeling to have sold something that meant that feedback gave me more incentive to keep creating. Because I was like, well, if I sold one, maybe I can sell more and maybe eventually I could do this as a living. So what I ended up doing um, as the semester was nearing its end, I was researching a lot, uh, reading a lot of books, and uh, listening to the stories of other artists who also would go down a similar path as me as far as um, being self-taught and doing everything by yourself. And I realized that it wasn't impossible, but it was very hard. And I kind of mentally prepared myself for the jump. So then uh, when a semester ended, I um, owed the school $100 because they messed up something and it kind of already I was already kind of angry at the school uh, at the college for taking advantage of college students and you know crazy fees for no reason for th their mistakes so I just decided I'm not going back to college so I just dropped out everyone was like oh are you sure like are you are you sure that's what you want to do you know like you're already almost there and I just I just couldn't do it anymore I did not find joy in the thought of teaching at a public school anymore and I couldn't justify spending more money on textbooks and all of that to do something that I didn't enjoy so then um, at this point on is I began to get extremely consistent every single day I had to draw at least for a couple of hours or do something art related so I did my research I did all the um, I would set short goals like making my own website and doing um, marketing and all of that, learning more about all of that, watching more YouTube videos about it, and just kind of absorbing all of the information like a sponge. So I started to get more incentive to create more work so I could do more gallery shows, and I was, as I would do more gallery shows, I would meet new people, and it was all very sh small steps that would slowly lead me to new opportunities and new connections and to this day even, I have connections that I formed from even my first art show that mean so much to me. And now to this day, I'm still pretty much doing the same thing, you know, small little steps. There are more responsibilities now because I've taken on more opportunities, but slowly I'm learning little by little 
and making mistakes here and there but still learning from them and using and using any bad experiences to better myself because you know ultimately you will have some bad experiences you'll have bad months where you don't sell anything you'll be discouraged you'll have self-criticism that's just crushing you but ultimately I think this is normal this is a normal part of the process so over this time span I've realized that art is so important for my well-being and it's so important for me to be able to spill my emotions out and cope with them and just be able to share that with the world is I couldn't ask for anything better, something more fitting for my life. Everyone's paths are completely different, but if I could give you a few tips, it's to be open to all the information and use all the resources possible that are available to you. Uh, you don't have to go to an expensive art school to do it. Some people do have more success through that option, but if you didn't have the money, say, to go to an expensive art school, you do have options available. So just a few extra fun facts for people who might be wondering. I am half Panamanian and half uh, American with German descent somewhere really far down the line. And um, so I'm bilingual. So my mom is the one who's Panamanian. So I know how to speak Spanish and I know how to speak English. Um, and another fun fact is that my uh, grandpa on my dad's side is an artist. He lives in Ohio and he does portraiture, landscapes, architecture. He works in acrylic mainly, um, but uh, he is a big driving force in inspiring me to create art, just seeing that he was able to make it. And then, um, and then my dad as well. My dad enjoys creative and he is very creative in multiple ways. So he's very creative in um, taking trash and turning it into treasure. So I share my home with four, no, five different pets. So I have one cat named Luna, she's my uh, biggest critic. Uh, one uh, corgi shih tzu mix named Minnie. Uh, two other shih tzus named Princess and Beauty. And finally, a roach named Norman. I was born in Killeen, Texas on December 9th. And I also lived in Michigan, in Inverness, Florida, in Miami, and Orlando. So I was kind of all over the place. And besides that, um, if you guys have any questions about either my career path, or if you have any questions about my methods for art as well, I'm actually going to do a frequently asked questions video as well soon. So if you guys have any questions about that, feel free to ask because I can definitely address them in the next video like this. And I hope I didn't bore you guys with my life story. I know, I hope it was somewhat interesting. This was just my experience and I am extremely thankful that all of you guys are here watching. When I first started my YouTube channel, I didn't even think I would get 100 subscribers, let alone 6,000 subscribers. So thank you guys so much for watching. It means the world to me and I will see you guys next time. Bye!